Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thanks for joining us for the uh, uh, Starling X uh, project update. First, just introduce ourselves. Uh, my name is uh, Brent Rousel. I'm a member of the uh, Technical Steering Committee, committee for uh, Starling X. I'm Dean Troyer, and the one who matches his picture on the screen. <clears throat> okay. Um, so uh, what is uh, Starling X? So Starling X is a uh, OpenStack uh, uh, pilot project. It was launched at the uh, at the uh, Vancouver at the Vancouver summit. It's under the governance of the foundation uh, with an Apache 2 license. Uh, what Star in short, what Starling X provides is a high performance, low latency, high availability, edge uh, platform for edge applications. <laughs> Uh, we just uh, recently comp uh, completed our first uh, community release on October 24th, and uh, and of course we're looking for uh, uh, for new contributors and operators to uh, leverage uh, leverage our platform for edge computing. Uh, so, so just a little bit about uh, edge computing. Um, what what's driving edge computing? So, so uh, new uh, genre of applications um, requiring low latency, high bandwidth, security, and connectivity. It's all about pushing the compute to the edge to, to address these requirements. Uh, so some of, the, some of the use cases here. Um, so uh, ultra low latency for... Um, for uh, for 5G telco and industrial IoT, so such as automated uh, automated vehicles, uh, cloud virtual RAN, uh, high bandwidth large volume applications, uh, such as mobile HD video, uh, <clears throat> in the uh, mobile edge compute or the multi edge computing space. Um, You've got uh, use cases such as augmented, augmented reality. Uh, so the the intent of the Starling X project is um, is to to take existing uh, proven cloud technologies and uh, reconfigure those for the for the edge use case. So orchestrate system wide, deploy and manage edge clouds, and share configurations. Uh, simplified deployment uh, to geographically dispersed remote edge regions. So, just um, we're just going to talk a little bit about the uh, about the technology. Uh, we have uh, a number of sessions uh, coming up later this week where we'll deep dive on this in in more detail. Uh, so, uh, Starling X is an edge virtualization platform. It's uh, deployment ready. It uh, it's scalable, uh, highly reliable, and provides uh, provides low latency. Uh, it's a complete stack, uh, starting with uh, starting with a, a OS layer. Uh, it's currently based on uh, CentOS, with plans in the future to move to multi OS. Uh, then we leverage a, no a number of other uh, open source uh, building blocks. And of course, uh, and of course, OpenStack. Uh, then we've got uh, a set of Starling X uh, services that are provided as part of the virtualization platform: configuration management, fault management, host management, service management, software management, and uh, a subsystem that we call infrastructure orchestration. But all these uh, together, all these uh, provide us uh, easy deployment, low-touch manageability. Uh, rapid response to uh, to fault events and fast recovery from from fault events. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this uh, this is a, a, a scalable platform. Uh, we can go as small as uh, one node, which would combine the uh, the uh, control compute and uh, and storage in in a single in a single box. There's a uh, there's a, re a redundant version of that configuration, and then there's the uh, multi-server uh, configuration that can scale up to uh, that can scale up to 100 uh, uh, compute nodes. Uh, 
Um, as, part of, as part of Starling X, um, we also have a uh, configuration for, dis, uh, for distributed edge uh, computing. It's uh, based, on, based on OpenStack regions. Uh, there's, a, there's a central cloud region that would host uh, some shared services as well as provide uh, system-wide infrastructure orchestration functions such as deploy, uh, deployment, uh, uh, deployment of edge clouds, uh, configuration of the edge clouds, fault aggregation uh, across all the edge clouds, and uh, the, the ability to perform uh, software update, software update orchestration across all edge, edge clouds from a uh, from a single pane of glass. Uh, the remote edge uh, clouds uh, can uh, can be geographically dispersed, uh, scalable as as we pointed in uh, one of the previous charts. So an edge cloud can be as small as one one node and scale all the way up to 100 servers. It it's uh, connected to this uh, central uh, central cloud uh, over L3, and uh, and the uh, edge clouds would run a, a reduced uh, control plane. And I'm going to turn it over to Dean to uh, talk a bit about the uh, community. Thanks, Brent. Um, Starling X is uh, uh, interesting in that it's a little bit different from the way OpenStack grew. We're taking an existing base of code and creating a new community around it. And it's, in some ways, it's a little bit inverted. But we started with uh, we started with a big pile of code that's essentially those flock services. Um, it's what we have been calling the row in the middle of that diagram Brent showed earlier. Um, but we released that and we're building the community around it. We're an OpenStack Foundation pilot project. Uh, we've established the governance. That's the TSC that, uh, that we're both a member of. Um, we're forming that. We've got eight members on that right now. And in April, we'll be doing our first set of elections where we will elect half again of those and then add a ninth seat directly elected. We are very much... Um, there's a little irony in this, but we are very much following the OpenStack principles. We do the four opens. Granted, we started with some seed code that wasn't open, but from that point forward, we are uh, we're following this uh, as much as we can. Um, the technical steering committee is a little bit different than OpenStack in that this is the group that's doing the architectural decisions um, and has the final say of the technical things. We are kind of organized as sub-projects rather than, well, actually, that's the next slide. Um, we think of, of Starling X as a single project, and we've broken up the flock services into actual sub-projects. Um, we have uh, split the leadership duties. Instead of a traditional PTL, we've got a technical lead and a project lead that lets some of our folks that are um, experts in project management help us out quite a bit, because a lot of us technical guys are not, are, are not good at that. But from there down, it's pretty much the same. We'll have a core reviewer list. Um, these are the folks responsible for review, reviewing and merging the code and then, and then contributors. We have, is that eight, um, of the primary projects, sub-projects, that are the, the flock services. And we've got a couple of uh, horizontal projects. Some of these we're actually calling sub-projects, and a few of them are very task-specific, like down at the bottom, um, you know, the Python 2 to 3 transition. Uh, all of the existing seed code base is Python 2, so we've got to get caught up to the rest of OpenStack with regards to being a Python 3 um, compatible first and then, and then uh, exclusive. Um, the multi-OS is another one of those that we see as a relatively short-term thing. Once we achieve that goal, then that should not need to continue to exist as an independent entity. Um, we did our first open release in October that is essentially taking the original seed code some things got removed, some things got changed, um, preparing it to be opened, and then going through everything like even having to learn how to build this outside of its original home. 
uh, was, a, was a bit of a challenge. And so the first release is the culmination of getting it back to a runnable, usable state, a recognizable state as, as something that operates instead of, um, <laughs> instead of a bunch of things that got broken up. Um, the original flock, for example, the original flock code was all in a single mono repo. And we split that up into 10, I think we're now at what, 13 or 14 um, code repositories, trying to break things down a little bit and make it feel a little bit more like OpenStack. You know, we had to set up all of, all of the Garrett work, um, bringing, you know, again, creating a community from scratch. We had to do all of this stuff over the summer. Um, we're still working on, on getting things set up with Zool. We've got the basic structure in place. That's relatively straightforward. Uh, converting the testing into a mode that we can run in CI with Zool is an ongoing process. And, um, and the docs, the entire docs project uh, surprised me about how much work that was actually going to be to actually publish to docs.starlingx.io. Um, all told, took about eight weeks to get, to get rolling. You want to tell us more about the next? Sure. Okay, so um, I want to spend a few minutes um, and talk about um, uh, some of the uh, major initiatives that we've got, uh, uh, got on deck for our next release. Um, so for, the, for our next release, um, we're moving to uh, uh, containerize, the, uh, uh, containerize our infrastructure services. So we're going to uh, we're evolving to run uh, containerized uh, OpenStack in addition to uh, some of those uh, uh, flock services that uh, that uh, Dean just uh, talked about uh, that would run on top of a, a bare uh, metal Kubernetes cluster, um, and with the with the life cycle of those containerized applications managed by OpenStack Helm and uh, Airship Armada. Uh, as part of this, we're introducing uh, introducing the bare metal uh, Kubernetes cluster as well. Uh, initial support for that would include Docker runtime, the Calico CNI plugin, uh, leveraging Ceph as the persistent storage backend, uh, leveraging Keystone for the uh, authorization and authentication of the uh, Kubernetes API. Would also have an, uh, an onboard uh, a synchronized. Uh, local Docker image registry, again, authenticated with Keystone. Um, and as I mentioned above, it would also leverage uh, Helm and uh, Airship for, uh, for, for orchestration. Uh, so what this gives us is it gives us a platform uh, that we're initially going to use uh, to containerize our infrastructure. But in addition to that, uh, it's also uh, it's a Kubernetes-ready platform for, for applications as well. Um, another another major initiative for the next release is uh, improvements to our uh, CIDC uh, process. Um, so, with the first release, uh, Starling X is is a is a source distribution and requires the uh, the, the end user to take the source, take the the build infrastructure that we provide, and and produce a, uh, a full ISO for deployment. Uh, what what we have in progress is um, we're partnering with a, um, a Canadian uh, nonprofit foundation, uh, Sengen, uh, to provide a public uh, RPM repository to help streamline the uh, the build process for for end users. As well, we'll also be publishing pre-built uh, uh, pre-built images that the that, that the community can download to uh, uh, to install a Starling X. Um, in, in addition to these uh, these two initiatives that we've uh, that I've just talked about, uh, we've got we've currently got 40, 40 plus other initiatives that we're uh, that we're currently looking at and prioritizing uh, for the next release. So there's, there's a significant amount of activity that's uh, that's going to be going on in our next release. Uh, so a good segue from that. Uh, um, so um, you know we're certainly we're certainly would uh, invite people to uh, to join uh, join the community. 
uh, try out the code, um, uh, contribute, uh, contribute to some of the uh, initiatives that we have in our next release and, and going forward. Uh, documents are Starling X, uh, IO. We have a mailing list. Uh, we have uh, regular uh, community meetings. Um, as well, we have additional uh, additional summit uh, uh, sessions coming up. Uh, there is a keynote uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, we have an Ask Me Anything session uh, tomorrow afternoon, and a project onboarding uh, where we'll go through the architecture in in more detail. And with that, uh, open the, up to questions. Uh, I had a question about your storage backend on the next release. You mentioned that how does it fit into the single device uh, footprint? Uh, so we would we would run Ceph on on the single node. So we'd combine the monitor and OSD functionality on on the single node. Okay. So for bare metal host management, are you uh, is this completely from scratch, or are you utilizing any existing components? Uh, so uh, part of these uh, flock services, as we call them, it, part of that is a bare metal management uh, infrastructure. So that was that was part of the uh, that C code that was contributed. Yes. I have two questions. So uh, for which um, container images are you using to deploy with uh, Helm uh, in this case? Uh, uh, images. Yeah, yeah, we're we're building our own images. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And um, you said that you have regions. Is there that, any communication? Yeah, one uh, on every edge side has a region. So, um, do we have any com communication between uh, these regions, network communication between, for example, VM, which is uh, on uh, one network, uh, one region, and not VM, which is maybe the same or another network uh, uh, on another region? Uh, yeah. So, so currently, no. That that is that that is something that that we that uh, we are considering. But uh, at this time, no, we do not. Are you sure. also addressing, I'm not familiar with the project, are you also addressing what's running in the central region as part of your project architecture and, and development? So what you mentioned is what's running on the edge, but obviously there needs to be a management and communication and so on between the central region and the edge, so it's part of the project start to also provide the... Yes, mm -hmm. yes, it's, it's, uh, it would be part of the project as well. And, and is it already part of... Let's say the initial release. Is there any the artifacts there already? Yes, uh, there, as part of the initial release, um, uh, there is a there is a version of this provided. Any other questions? Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs>